Good morning, good morning. Good to see everybody. Good morning, Perry. Good morning to you, Bob. Good morning, Greg. Good to see you all. Good to have you. Should see my screen. Let me know if not. Yes, excellent. <clears throat> okay. Uh, good morning, Michael. I hope that your vacation went well. Welcome back. Good to see you. All right, let's dive in. Welcome out to the Market Watch Group midweek check in. It's a good time to check in after yesterday. Had a Bit of a disappointing inflation report. Market responded, obviously, in a negative fashion. Okay. Yeah, well, the market was a bit extended. We've been talking about the possibility of a consolidation. We'll see where it puts us. My name is Scott. I will be your host. Um... Here are the disclaimers, as always, educational illustrative purposes only. We are not advisors, yada, yada, yada. Today's agenda. First and foremost, we'll look at the opening analysis, what the futures are doing. Um, we'll take a look, especially after yesterday, and we'll just see what does that do to our expectations from a posture standpoint. There are times where something that happens during the week can be quite disruptive to our overall posture. And we're like, whoa, I think we need to reevaluate this. And there are other times where we say, this is 100% in line with our posture. There's no need for us to do anything but continue to look for what we were looking for. So that's, <clears throat> that's the questions. Uh, Bob says futures are up. Yep. We're getting a good back already. A good amount back already, or it seems to be stalling. Now, of course, we're going to wait for it to open and see, does it open and sell off? Does it hold? Does it? Oh, we want to we want to at least get a sense of the opening range. But uh, is there a chance that this price action yesterday created dips that we would be willing to trade and are looking to trade? Yes. I would say definitely that's a yes. Uh, mindset for only open trades. Uh, Bob said yesterday he took some profits. Um, one loss and kind of pa pared things down. <clears throat> we did get a head signal. Monday was a head signal. Uh, I would, if you took it, let me know. Um, it, it, we talked about it on Monday and said, look, it's early now, but as long as it stays like this, this is. Uh, unless it unless it reverts back down to its prior levels, which it didn't do, it was a head signal, and then boom, we got yesterday. Now today we're it might it might be a short lived hedge, right? We'll see. We, that's certainly something that we uh, want to talk about. Uh, shopping list: Is there anything setting up? That's what we're looking for, and we'll talk about record keeping. Um, this this week's trading plan that section that we're working on. Okay, let's dive in. Let's dive in, and there it is. You can see the futures really were kind of flat overnight, and then all of a sudden, boom, they all hit. Um, S and P is up 0.44. The Dow about a quarter of a percent. The Nasdaq just a, a hair over a half a percent, and then there's that that Russell is getting whipped around by the expectations that that are uh, based on what the Fed is thinking about, and the Russell futures are up one and a quarter percent. Futures bounce. The futures are pointing to a bounce back from our hit yesterday. 
Uh, Musk wants to dethrone Delaware. It won't be easy. I don't think we care. Lyft shares going wild ride after a clerical error. <clears throat> I'm curious. Are you? <laughs> I'm curious. Mm. Well, I mean, it dropped yesterday, and then today it's going to open up here. But it's earnings. I don't know what the clerical error is. All right. I'm just curious. <coughs> earnings and Fed speak and rideshare strikes. What to watch? Um, can seasonality predict S&P 500 for the year? We have a tendency to look at the seasonality. And the seasonality is definitely in our favor. So <laughs> anyone who likes it is going to uh, certainly point towards February, March, and April as bullish months historically when you look at the cyclical progress of any given year. Uh, okay. Uh, that's about it. Let's look at the calendar. Uh, what we have going on. Not not much by expectations from the economic calendar either. We have only two things happening. They're both Fed speak, and one of them doesn't even happen until after the market's closed. Uh, so, or as the market closes, I guess, 4 p.m. So you have Chicago Fed, Austin Goolsby. Chicago Fed, okay. I'm I'm not familiar with Mr. Goolsby. I certainly like his last name. And Michael Barr, Fed Chair, speaks. So there's that's it's nothing, right? It's nothing. So we'll see how the market responds now as we come back in Thursday. There's a little bit. There's some mid-level reports, jobless claims, manufacturing, sales, production, utilization. Um, and then, and also some feds, uh, Fed Governor Waller and Austin Atlanta Fed Bostic. Friday, PPI. Um, Friday PPI. So we have that 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 becomes more important now. Now that we had an inflationary report that missed, everyone's going to be watching the next inflation report even more closely. So, as are we. Hey, let's go see what this did to the Fed. Let me refresh this. Make sure I have the most recent data. And this is our March meeting. It's now uh yeah, you know, 10 to 1 plus. Nobody thinks that March is going to bring and March is still what? 3 weeks Five weeks away, I mean, five weeks, 35 days. Uh, five weeks away, no expectation of a cut in March. When we look at May, look at that shift, right? May now shows almost two to one against. So the probabilities now have adjusted once again and now favor no cut until June. And even in June, they're still like, well, now if this June has a quarter of a point as the highest probability and a half a point has the same basic odds as no cut at all. So you know, there's still a, you know, there's that iffy chance in May. June says, most likely at that point, if we haven't yet, we'll get a quarter of a point. But it's definitely tempering expectations quite a bit, right? Quite a bit. There was, for a while there, it was like, you know, people expecting to tra-la-la -la through the lollipop forest and... 
we didn't. <laughs> we may get we may get one percent cut, so we may get a quarter of a point four times. And you can see if we don't get the first one till June, there's only four left. So the odds of getting a full one are are probably less at that point. I mean, they can always, if they ever think that it's slowing down too much, they can always knock it down a half a percent just to you know spark something. Um, all right, so there it is. Uh, let's go. We've seen the economic calendar for the rest of the week. We know the Fed. We know the news. Let's go finish up real quickly before the market opens and take a peek at the futures one more time. Okay, so there's there's the results from from the future standpoint. Now, you know, yesterday, pretty big. I don't I don't look at the volume as much on this one here. We'll look at that at SPY. But the the trend seems fine. It's intact. Um, it could even come down a little further. Uh, let me go to the let me go to the VIX, and then as the market opens here in another minute, we'll switch back. You'll see I have a line that I drew that I said we'll see if this is it. Okay. <clears throat> um, let's see. I don't think we spiked that high. Did we? Well, I guess we got, I guess we did get as high as 18 at the end of the day yesterday. I don't remember it being that high at the end of the day. Yeah, we did. We did get a good piece back right at the end, didn't we? Okay, so here's the VIX. Um... Woo. And it's interesting because we did finish up here. We've now got a higher high. <clears throat> and you can see what we, when I talk about the escalation that it was there. There's the there's the low, there's the turn. But I'll tell you what, we're we're pulling back already. Very interesting what's happening right now. Um this is going to as we talk about the impact on our market posture. This is going to take it down for sure, a quarter of a point. <laughs> Maybe even a half, but at least a quarter. Um, so this is going to drop back down to a one, maybe even to a 0.75 because of that spike, probably to a 0.75. <laughs> so that's going to that's gonna dial things back pretty quickly. Um, okay. What else? The market's open. Let's go look at the SPY because I have lines drawn there. Then we'll get to the watch list. Ah, so I drew that new trend line in and I said, if we do pull back now, did I expect it was going to drop and sit on that line and then look like it's starting to bounce in one day? No, that was not my expectation. But, and and you can see that this type of a, yes, now I expect it to bounce, is anticipatory. It's so fast that the stochastics doesn't have time to acknowledge it yet, right? Um, so you might look at this and say, you know, let's give this a little bit. Let's give this today, see where it is by the end of the day. And if it's still sitting here and you're willing to, you might have some anticipatory signal. Okay. When I look at this trend, my score of a two is based on this line, these lines, and it held up as of now. So my score is not going to change from that. What will change? So my uh, my long term score is going to stay the same. My short term score is going to stay the same. My volume is not. So volume, uh, which was a point seven five. We said, whichever way we get a, a a volume day, if it if a volume day comes in favor of the buyers, it will stay at a 0.75. If not, 
we're going to lose that and it's going to drop. So that's going to drop. So there's a good chance we're, we're, we're still in the sixes, but we're going to drop at least a half, maybe a 0.75. But that's all I think we're going to drop. I do think that the Russell held up enough that our, our major market's going to hold up. The sectors have held up. We already checked the trends. So unless something crazy happens, yeah, a little, a little bit of a ease back. Anything over a six, I'm still as bullish as I was. There's, It's not like I'm like, oh, ease back. No, still feeling pretty good about it. Bob says he agrees. Let me know your thoughts. Do you still see this market bullishly? How did you get impacted yesterday? Did you sur- Did you survive it? Did you thrive in it? Let me know. Press said he heard an analyst say yesterday there are two sets of bulls. One set thought there were seven rate cuts year this year. The other see strong fundamentals. Huh. Okay. Uh, I don't see seven cuts this year. I think four. Four is the max. I don't. I think it'll be a maybe in May. I think we're looking at four quarter right. Four quarter point cuts that may not start till June. So with June, there's only five meetings left. So maybe they cut, cut, stop, pause, cut, cut. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, IWM is flat, even though the futures were up. Ah, let's take a look. Let's look around at things for a minute. Uh I mean, it's it's up 1.3. It's just, it's a red candle. Yesterday was red. It's got a funky look to it, but I'll tell you what, we bounced really well and then gave it back. It was like, what was it, 4% yesterday? Um, I think we were down 4% on the small caps. It was, it was, a, <laughs> it was like, oh, every time... We feel like we've adjusted to the new expectations. There's uh, information that comes out and the small caps really show how sensitive they are (laughs) to interest rate changes. Okay. Okay. I think we've looked at everything. Let's get to the watch list. Uh, got an LVS. Hey, Las Vegas. That we added that one recently. Very cool. Thank you for sharing, Greg. Let me get to the list here. Apple. Is Apple still tradable? Yes. Whoops. What did I just do? Ah, go back to Apple. Apple. Um, going to expire 216. Yeah, that's tough. That's running out of time. I mean, it, it recovered, pulled back. You can see that this has come down, but this is trying to go up. Honestly, for me, it's just uh, 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 can it can it hold right here? If it can hold, possible. Um, Michael, that's a great, that's a great one. Anytime you have one like that, it's a great one to learn from, to go back and be like, all right, let's dissect this thing. What went wrong? Where, how do we learn from it? AIG. So AIG, we, we looked at it. We said, you really only have a couple of days, assuming your rule is, not to hold through earnings. Now here, you're like, oh, if I would have held through earnings, look how good. I I get it. And then you look at other ones where you're like, if you would have held through earnings, it's down here. Um, Yeah. Um, It's bullish at this point. We're just going to now watch and see what happens when it starts to uh, pull back. AMD. AMD. 
you can see was was developing and then it got a little rattled and now it's starting to turn. Uh, I would say this. Right now, we're coming out of a consolidative period with a momentum candle. I mean, if that's all you ever did was take trades that looked like that, you'd probably be pretty happy with the results, especially uptrending stocks. This gives you the ability to put a stop fairly tight underneath this low, um, 170 and a half. So you're taking about $4 of risk. Can I get 12? I mean, 190, I would say, is in the cards. That's 16. So I, I look at something like this and think, it's not always that you're so convinced that it's definitely going up. That's that's not, you know, we definitely want to have expectations it's going higher. But at the end of the day, what do we have? It's trending. It's you know, it's it's above the 50, it's stochastics is turning up. We've got some things lining up. But what else I have is I have markers that allow me to set a stop and a target to produce a, a very favorable. I mean, I would say I'm looking to get four to one on that. Uh, options are a little expensive. Right? Let's let's it's not down here in the 30s. That's when they're that's when they're cheap. It's not up here in the 60s, but that's typically right before earnings build up. For for not being in earnings build up, they're they're relatively expensive. So something like that would say what? Spread trade probably. Right? Or uh, more in the money option. But AMD is definitely on the list. On the list and possibly triggering. <clears throat> Amazon consolidating. Uh, I feel like I have a whole new list here. AAPL is on the list. AMD on the list. Amazon. Look at that. Three on the list. We're not even through the A's yet. AXP. Yeah. Put it on the list. <laughs> Why? Look, I mean, everything's uptrending. They're all going in these consolidations. As they consolidate, my thought is when they're done consolidating, I want to ride. Let's see what happens. Boeing, nothing. BK. Oh, BK. BK started to turn. This one could have got you. Uh, I did not end up putting this one on. And I'm trying to remember why I did not. Uh, but it it turned, it looked okay, and then oh, it just abruptly got hit. So I'm 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 thinking BK needs to sort some things out. Uh, BLDR has a funky look about it. Earnings are coming up. I think I'll probably just watch. You can see BX. If you were in it, it stopped you out. Uh, 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 I would imagine it stopped you out um, with the stop here around 126 ish. Now, with that being the case, with that being the case, um, it basically opened and then pretty quickly, um, you know, no stop on the open, but look to work work the way out so done anyone else did anyone trade this one city ah so city we were still waiting for it moved one more time down you might be thinking ah oh, but look at your drawing the drawing was just i've been moving the drawing down the whole time the drawing started over here, and then it didn't work. Just like over here, you might have been like, maybe, oh. So, there. Stayed in. Good. It's got a, a, full, a fully confirmed. Now, if you wanted to move it to the shadow, you could. I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, because realistically, I'm really only letting, looking for it to get back to that same spot. 58 target. Does this have uh, a Heiken Ashi now? Always nice to see it. 
yeah, it's a, it's not a big body. It's a small body. I would probably not tighten my stop just yet. I would probably want one more day. If you are entering now, you might not put your stop below the low. You might, but you also wouldn't have to go down here. You might put it at the low of yesterday's body. So maybe 52.82, a dollar stop. Uh, stop at 52, Bob said, right now. That, that, that makes sense right now. Um, low is 52.24. You're below that. That makes sense. Um, if you're getting in now and you wanted to be a little bit more aggressive with the stop, I think you could. We've got about $4 ahead of us in potential is what I would say. Four and change. Um, so how much would I want to risk? A uh, buck 50 at most. If I could get, if I could risk a dollar, that would be fantastic. Okay. Let's keep going. Yeah. Things look pretty good right now, actually. All things considered. Well, certainly things getting hit. We're not happy about, but. Well, looks to be recovering here pretty quickly. Caterpillar still on the list. That's really starting to set up. Not quite ready yet. Looks strong. COF, yeah, it kind of gave a false start there. We'll see. I'm going to leave it off for now. COP, nothing. Costco, Costco, Already starting to set up again. <laughs> I mean, right? Already setting up again, potentially. Um, CrowdStrike. So had closed most of it. Um, uh, some of it here, the rest of it here, luckily, and not having to sit through this here. Um, now, I, I, I think we're in a wait. It still looks like I don't know. Yesterday was crazy. We'll see. Um, I'm not going to put it on the list because I'm just not sure if that looks. This is, it's volatile right now, right? It's hard to want to get into something like that because where would you put your stop? CSX. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Nice, mild consolidation. Trend looks good. Definitely looking for an entry there. DAL, nothing yet. DHI, nothing yet. The Dow looks looks fine. Pulling back, but it looks fine. Draft Kings, yeah, earnings coming up. Let's just watch and see. Ford, I would say Ford still setting up. It's still looking good. Huh? Out of the consumer discretionary, fast and all. Um, that's a that's a possibility. That was a false start earlier. Still still a valid setup appearing, it seems. GE. Wow. Wow. GE looking strong. Gold really starting to teeter. Uh, Google. Oh, yeah. Let's put Google on the list. So we said Google did enough when the buyers came in. Now the, now the sellers. What are we looking for? We're looking for it to stay above the 50. Give us a higher low. Bounce. All right. Home Depot, I would say is a maybe, other than the fact that earnings are about three days away, right? Um, yeah, so a week from yesterday. Not three days, but you don't have much time. IBM. Ugh, IBM. It just failed to launch. Um... Yeah, it failed to launch. I ended up taking a taking the loss. It was not a wasn't a bad loss at all. Mild loss, but I took the loss. Anybody still still in IBM? It never really broke support, which is interesting, right? It never really broke down, but it also just sort of just fizzled out enough that I'm like, nah, I don't, I'm done. <laughs> Take the loss and move on. Small loss. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, but it's it's going up a little now. Uh, I agree. Intel, nothing yet. Small caps still trying, but boy, I'll tell you, they're they're really fighting to hang on. JP Morgan, no. Well, it's a good thing we had a lot of stuff early because here, oh, there you go. Look at Las Vegas Sands still going up. Uh, I have a feeling that the hike in Ashy, this this is a great guide right here. You can see that it had uh, this is a little bit of a a transition, but it reemerged into momentum. As long as these candles have no like they don't break down, so uh, when they have a shadow, they're concerning. But when they have no lower shadow like this one, beautiful. Keep an eye on that. Helpful in the management. Meta. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I thought I was doing the right thing, holding on, waiting for it to pull back. Yesterday, I'm like, okay. Today, it's like, is that it? We have to put it on the list, but that's a tough one to trade into looking like that. No stochastics yet. Pinching, but not turning. Microsoft on the list. Got um, hit yesterday. Today, it's still just kind of down there. That's fine. We're well above the 50. The trend looks great. Netflix. We've had Netflix on the list. That's a tough. It's hard to trade into a three and a quarter confirmation signal. Um, Not that it's, I mean, it almost increases the probability of it going right, but building that with the reward to risk and finding where you're comfortable placing your stop. That's the challenge. Um, and it's an expensive stock, so I don't know. Netflix. Video. <laughs> um, just keeps on going. Earnings coming up soon. Picar. Um, this was one that I had on and, and got out of. Now... I don't know. Today, today just got an extra bump, right? An extra breath of life. Hughes looks like it's setting up. ROST, I would say, setting up. Let's put that on the list. That's also new. Consumer discretionary. What does the three and a quarter refer to? Um, three and a quarter. Uh, 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 is that something I described it as three and a quarter? Huh, I don't know what I meant then. <laughs> um, three and a quarter. Let me look at it. Oh, <clears throat> percentage for the day. Um, <clears throat> now it's only up 3.11%, but it was up three and a quarter percent. Meaning um, if I put my stop, so from here to just here, that's already three and a quarter percent, <clears throat> which means to here is probably 4%, which means if I go below that for a stop, that's, Four, four to five percent that's tough that means that from where i am now sorry i just i lost my my bearing but now i got it <laughs> now if we're if we need four or five percent there that means we need eight to ten percent to get two to one eight to ten percent holy shit man that's asking a lot <laughs> Especially if it's not around earnings, right? Um, we're not getting eight to ten percent. So anytime I, I, I want to catch it, so that I can get my uh, get in and get my stop, so that I can get I can get my two to ones. But if I if I'm looking at too much risk on the initial entry, then it's just it's too hard for the return to overcome it. That's what I mean when I say that. So again, 
Just like sometimes I like a trade, not because I look at it, I'm like, oh, I'm so convinced it's going to go right. But because I'm like, if it goes right, I get four to one. And there's times where I don't like a trade when I'm like, yeah, I think it's going up. But, you know, when I put my stop where I'm comfortable, I'm getting one and a half to one. So it's not worth it. Why am I putting my, why am I doing that when I can get three to one and four to one in other areas? It's just not, doesn't make sense for me to, to get one and a half to one. And so, you know, if, if, if too much has already moved and I can't find a place to put the stop that, that allows me to control the risk at a certain level, then I'm just going to pass the trade. Okay. Uh, great question. I appreciate you calling me back on that one. Okay, where are we? NVIDIA. Nope, we're past NVIDIA. We are at SMCI. My God, look at that stock go. <laughs> what the hell? What have they done? They have a, per perhaps, an AI overlord uh, ready to go? I don't know. Anytime I see something moving, I'm thinking... <laughs> Uh, that's amazing. I mean, it is just flown past even NVIDIA. Uh, this thing was at 300 pre-earnings in the middle of uh, uh, January. And a month later, it's, all, it's tripled uh, almost. That's amazing. Absolutely astounding. SPY, we're holding up, but not really gaining. Any ground yet? So we may still be in this consolidation. We have plenty of setting up, but still waiting for our triggers. TPR is new. Tapestry, yeah, nothing yet. UNP, put it on the list. So our list has what? We have some industrials. We have some tech. We have some communication services. And we have some consumer discretionary. Uh, no financials in there. Um, no healthcare. We don't have healthcare. We need to find some healthcare at some point. The VIX has come down substantially, but it's still in an elevated position. We're we're above fourteen, but again, uh, come on, we're in the teens. It's not that bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, city's moving. Okay, there you go. City is one that we like. Look at that. Um, if you sat through it, great. If you didn't, trade on. I mean, this thing is confirming. Uh, for today, the city and what was the other one that we looked at today? City and uh. Uh, AMD AMD yes City and AMD those are the two today AMD love it okay Obakebe Waste Management had good earnings and popped ugh it is hard when it's like, you know, you're watching the right stocks because they keep all the stocks we watch keep going up on earnings. <laughs> uh, man, strong. Walmart consolidating, but earnings are around the corner. Let's take a look at the sectors real quickly here. Biotech is flat. Materials is flat. Communication services still strong. Looking to turn maybe. Energy's flat. Financials, uh, a little flat. Still bullish overall. Uh, still bullish. Uh, still bullish. Uh, still bullish and maybe looking to signal. We've got Costco there. Utilities down. Healthcare up. Healthcare's on the list for me um, as an ETF. I'm putting XLV on my list. And lastly, XLY. Um, the the Waste Management Golf Tournament was a real drunk show. I should watch that. That sounds fun. When I think of golf, 
the happiest I think of it is Happy Gilmore, right? Like <laughs> that's that's a hockey style fight on a golf course. That's my dream. Okay, this week's trading plan, remember, is uh, I have a lot of word documents here. What is it this week? Record keeping? Nope. Analytics. Uh, analytics. Um, get get your record keeping in order. Oh my gosh! A spectator dove into a sand trap. So funny story. A friend of mine, excellent golfer, way back when, used to put together golf simulators when they were really new and expensive. And uh, his company got him tickets to uh, the Masters. And he was drinking. And I could show you the news article. Um, they have it from the local news here from way back when. And he ran out, dove into the sand trap, and did sand angels. And the two players who were on the hole at the time were Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson. And he said, Phil Mickelson walked to the edge of the sand trap, looked over and shook his head at him. You didn't even know why he did it. And then he got arrested. I mean, <laughs> so funny. He was, I think he was having a mental breakdown. But yeah, Masters, Sand Trap, Sand Angels, arrested. It's 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 on the books. Good, good friend of mine that went to high school with. <laughs> Analytics. Get your get your trade log in order. Uh get your trade log in order. Nope, that's not it. And uh, then your analytics will come along. So, yeah, that's what we're working on. We had a great session on routines yesterday. We have another trading foundations tomorrow night. Market looks fine. Man, anyone who was panicking yesterday, I don't know what you were panicking about. I don't think that's us. It's good to see everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I will see you tomorrow. Um, and as always, happy trading.